Hello everyone, what's happening? Hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Okay, got all the admin stuff out of the way. So people say being in a coma is one of the worst possible things you could go through. You're awake and can understand what people are saying, but you can't move, speak or respond to anything. A prisoner in your own body. And for some people, that wasn't even the worst part of their coma. So let's just get into it. This is the Top 10 Scary Coma Story. Starting us off with number 10 is the surprise daughter. So back in 2012, Emma Miners, a 23 year old girl living in Clacton, had had a pretty smooth pregnancy. She was about 29 weeks along when she developed a cold and a cough, which isn't uncommon during pregnancy, but then the next day she woke up feeling really lightheaded and unable to breathe. Her husband freaked out as any husband would and took her to the hospital and she was quickly diagnosed with pneumonia. After seeing x-ray pictures, she could see white fluid covering her lungs and her vision kept blurring and she soon fell into a coma. While she was in a coma, she suffered two strokes and her body swelled to the point doctors actually had to cut her wedding ring off her finger. Emma remained unconscious for a month, during which time her baby was also born. When she finally woke up and nurses showed her pictures of her daughter, Emma couldn't believe it was her child. She had zero recollection of even being pregnant, let alone giving birth. Literally, imagine going to sleep pregnant and waking up not. That's scary. Emma was just surprised that even while unconscious, her body still knew what to do. Well, the female body is an incredible thing, Emma. Coming in at number nine is the amputation. So this one's from Reddit a Real Basilisk. I like the Harry Potter shout out there. Who said her mother was in an induced coma for many months. During the coma, surgeons had to amputate both her legs due to sepsis. So already that's one reason she was going to freak out as soon as she woke up. But when she actually did, the user asked her about it. And she said she had no idea of her surroundings. But she had had a lot of horrific vivid nightmares of demons and vampires chewing off her legs and her trying to escape. The pain was real, she said she felt it, and that they even left her there bleeding with no legs. I can't even imagine. Even if she knew it wasn't real, imagine how relieved she must have been probably waking up and being like, oh, thank God, my legs are there. But then they weren't. At number eight is the alternate reality. So this one's from Reddit user Nit Lab, who said her dad entered into a two month coma a few years ago. They started talking about his experience a few months ago after he woke up and he told her how he had dreamed or hallucinated that he'd lived for 10 years during that two month period. He traveled the country, met people, did all sorts of things and everything was very vivid. So when he did actually wake up and go home, he said it would really throw him off when he met people he hadn't seen since before the coma and they hadn't aged 10 years because that's what he expected to see. Can you imagine living your life for 10 years but only two months going by? How many lifetimes can you fit into that? You could do everything you ever wanted to, even though technically it wouldn't be real, but you could still experience it, sort of. <laughs> Filling at number seven slot is the bilingual. Back in 2012, Aussie born Ben McMoen fell into a coma after being in a car crash. The coma lasted a full two years, and when he woke up, he said the first thing he saw was a nurse of Asian descent speaking to him in Mandarin. And somehow, miraculously, I don't know how, Ben could answer her back in fluent Mandarin. He could even write it. So, Ben, asleep in a coma, somehow managed to learn one of the hardest languages in the world in his sleep and here I am struggling to even speak English in this damn video. I'm pissed. <laughs> okay, not really. I definitely wouldn't choose to be in a coma just to wake up fluent in a new language, but still. Ben had previously been to China before and studied a bit of Mandarin during high school, but he was never fluent until this episode. Would I give up two years to learn a language? I don't know. Now at number six, we have Anon. So Anon was in a car accident and broke parts of her neck, hip, and clavicle. She was in a coma for two months and people thought she would wake up either paralyzed or be in a vegetative state. State forever. When she did finally wake up, the first thing she saw was a happy birthday banner right in front of her, and the first thing she thought was, How old am I? She started becoming erratic and she was convinced she was 60 and that decades had passed. Honestly, if I was her and I saw that, I would probably think the same. She even tried to go to the mirror to look at herself, but she couldn't walk. She then tried to scream so someone would come and help her, but nothing came out. She was lost for what to do and was freaking out that she had lost so much of her life. 
but she opted for a simple solution. She looked at the back of her hands to see that they hadn't aged much at all, so then she guessed perhaps only a few years had gone by. I mean, that's better than a few decades, right? The coma actually, in reality, only lasted seven months, but I think anyone would be terrified waking up in that situation. Coming in at number five is the alligator. So this one's from Redditor Zoldberg Bot, and it's about their dad. They said their dad spent a total of six months in a coma, and the whole time he thought he was in a sewer underneath his favorite bar. Inside the sewer, it was just him and an alligator. People were walking above the sewer gate, they were throwing cigarette butts down there, but that didn't matter because all he could do was just stare at this alligator. Like he didn't even take his eyes off of it. Did he blink? Who knows? He knew if he made a sound, he'd get attacked. And it didn't occur to him that maybe this wasn't real, or why was it always nighttime, or why couldn't anyone see him when they looked down. But none of that even mattered because that was just the reality he had to live through for six months. Imagine actually thinking you're stuck in a sewer with an alligator for six months. I don't know if I would survive that. At number four is The Grudge. This one is really unfortunate. I truly feel for this person. So this one's from Redditor GWThrowaway451 who fell off the second story of a construction site and landed on his head. Already having the impact on his head, it's a miracle he was even alive, but he did enter a coma shortly after. Before the fall and the coma, he had watched The Grudge the night before, and so during his entire coma, he dreamed or hallucinated that he was trapped in a totally white room with just The Grudge Girl. Like, alligator is one thing, but The Grudge Girl? You're testing me. She didn't hurt him or do anything. She literally just stood there and refused to move. I couldn't even stand seeing her on my screen for the time that I had to, so I can't even imagine being stuck in a room with just her with no way out. When he woke up, he was so scared, he even refused to close his eyes for a few nights out of sheer fear. Filling our number three slot is the nightmare. This one's from Reddit user Chocolate Milk Shark, who was in a coma for an undisclosed reason. But during it, she was literally being tortured. She remembered being in a medieval sort of room and that she was inside of a tiny almost cartoon like tiny cage in the middle of this room. It was so small she couldn't even turn her head but she knew that there were people behind her because she'd hear footsteps or whispers and was utterly terrified. There was even a painting that she swore moved when she wasn't looking at it. She said the worst part was at one point when she was sweating loads and then she heard a deep raspy voice go all right it's time followed by a bunch of footsteps running towards her from behind. These things surrounded her and they were so tall she couldn't even see their faces. Well I mean that's also because she couldn't move or turn her head but still I'm, I'm assuming they were very tall. The last thing she remembered was a hand as black as night with fully white nails come through the cage towards her face and then she woke up and it was all a bad dream. I mean, no, it actually was. In real life, it was just her seven-year-old niece who was moving her hand over her face, but clearly in her mind, it was distorted to that menacing of a degree. That's actually like living in your own inescapable nightmare, and how many times have I said that about these cases? I feel like I say that about every single one, but it's true. Now at number two is Sarah Thompson. So back in 2012, Sarah had a blood clot in her brain that made her fall into a coma for 10 days. But when she woke up, she woke up 14 years in the past. Yes, Sarah believed it was 1998 when she woke up and she thought her favorite band was still the Spice Girls and that Michael Jackson was still alive. In 1998, Sarah would have been 19, still married to her previous husband and having just given birth to her first son. So fast forward that in 2012 when she actually did wake up and her two other children came into the room with her new husband, she had no idea what was going on. The boy she had just given birth to was now magically 14 years old and she had zero recollection of the other two kids and she thought her husband was a horrible hospital worker. When she was finally discharged, she still acted like she was 19. She would throw tantrums, dye her hair wild colors, etc. because that's what all 19 year olds do, apparently. It took a while, but she did end up readjusting to the present time and re-falling in love with her husband. No news of whether she ended up remembering her other two kids or not, but I really hope she did because if I was her kid, I would feel really really stated about this. And finally, at number one is Hayley Poutre. Now this one is sad and scary at the same time, so bear with me. At the age of four, Hayley was separated from her mother because her boyfriend was sexually abusing her and she went to live with her maternal aunt Holly and her boyfriend Jason. Massachusetts Social Services got many calls about Hayley's well-being in this time, saying the now eight-year-old was always covered in bruises. When investigated, Holly just said Hayley bruised herself. You know how kids do, they fall over, they bruise themselves, 
it was believable. At the age of 11 though, she was taken to the ER because the couple said after exhibiting flu-like symptoms, she became unresponsive. Under x-rays and examinations, doctors found that her brainstem was sheared, she had broken teeth, many lacerations and contusions, and multiple burns at different stages of healing. And the couple was then arrested and charged with battery and assault, but then Holly was released on bond during which she made a suicide pact with her grandmother and then killed herself. I know this is taking many turns, but just stay with me. At this point, Jason is now her sole de facto parent, and he chose to keep Haley on life support because if he didn't, he would have been charged with her murder. Physicians wanted to remove her from life support because they believed she was virtually brain dead. The state approved this, and the day she was meant to be removed off life support, she became responsive and awoke up. Perfect, brilliant timing. The order got cancelled, and she got the order was cancelled, and she got a lot better. Haley is confined to a wheelchair, but can speak through a letterboard on it. And two years after waking up, she testified at Jason's trial, and he was sentenced to 12 to 15 years in prison. And I say he definitely got what he deserved. But don't worry, she's living a happy life with her foster parents now. And that's it for today's video, guys. Thankfully, I've never been in a coma, but I get claustrophobic really quickly. So if I was in one of those situations where I could hear everyone, but I was trapped, I actually think I would lose my mind, no question. So I really do feel for everyone on this list. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Ivan Hassan, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.